Hello everybody, this is Theron. Welcome to Minecraft Land Party. So, this is a big hole in the ground. And I've been digging it out bigger. Not for any good reason, but for a reason I'll get into in a moment. But look, there's a slime down there. So this is this is my little slime area, right? And I've got like one, two, three, four, wait, one, two, three, four, five slime chunks in this little cave. And I've been digging it out, and I added some platforms, some spawning platforms. Um, yeah, and then I've been lining up some of the caves around. There's some spawners in these walls, and I might do something with those. Hi, please stop doing that. Thank you. Um, I have a cat on my lap, and he likes... He likes digging his claws into me and licking me, which neither of which I particularly enjoy. Stop. Okay. So, um, yeah. So I put out a, a video last Monday, just over a week ago, and that was scheduled. I had made that before uh, because I've been gone. Woo. Uh, spotting platform. So now this chunk has four times as many spawning spots as it did before. And between light up the caves and building up some platforms here, this thing, I do get a lot more slime in here. And I don't know how much farther I have to take this. I mean, this is not, you know, this is still negative Z. It spawns a slime all the way up to 40. So I don't think I'm going to go crazy with that. Because frankly, I have just about, uh, that's probably maybe enough slime, like more slime than I'll ever need. Um, so this isn't, I, I don't see the need to automate this, um, keeping it somewhat manual work. I will probably set up, I have an old iron golem here with a little slime reducer to automatically collect the slimes you happen to get within his range. I will probably build a tower of these smack dab in the middle of this chunk going up. So the slimes on the platforms will see him and decide to go aggro uh, or see them and decide to go jump off but um so yeah so i'll probably build a few i don't know how far up i'll take this uh, i was gonna put a layer of something in between the glowstone here as a just to make it look better and i may still do that i don't know what it'll be um something cheap i'm using polished deep slate for the platforms themselves, just so it's a little different from everything else around it. And I do have to be a little careful climbing up this scaffolding, which I moved slightly because it was inside this chunk, because uh, things will spot on here. So when I get a little farther away, like when I go up to the platform where I'm excavating things now, I'll look down and see slimes starting to spawn. So that's cool. Um, and I've been digging out stuff with uh using my fortune pick so that i get the cobbled deep slate because you can actually do something with that uh, you can't do much with the smooth deep slate it, you other than re-break it with a non-silk touch pick in order to get cobbled the deep slate so it's kind of lame um you think that there would be more things to do with it and i hit a blob of gravel here so i have to be a little careful um but yeah so the reason i scheduled the video is because i was on vacation took a cruise did an alaska cruise which is the third time i've done 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 an alaska cruise um, chihuahua power g and i did one for our honeymoon back in the day and we've been since, uh, we went shortly after her cancer diagnosis, um, just as kind of a, let's go have fun before she goes into, or after she got done with treatment, 
Um, yeah. So we do like them. And uh, the scenery is pretty. And you get to stop in quaint little towns. Alaska is an interesting place because you, uh, you can't drive anywhere. Uh, basically, the most of the towns don't have roads that connect to other towns. So you have to either come in by air or by sea. Which is interesting. Um, and we like cruises because um, they're kind of fun. Um, and they're like booking a, a multi-stage hotel or vacation without having to worry about, um, you know, unpacking and packing every time you, every time you go to a new place. So it's like a hotel that floats with you and then you just get to go and visit different places. It's kind of cool. Um, then we brought along her mother who was, I think, itching to get out on a trip and had been looking at other cruises and her uh, husband, John Parji's father, has uh, kind of got cold feet on one of the ones that she was planning on doing, which sounded like a really cool cruise, but it was a huge commitment. So, uh, so we invited her along and she came and had a great time. <clears throat> and and it was a weird it was a weird cruise yeah it was very weird during the um, started in Vancouver and uh, we got stuck in port because there was a tugboat captain strike the tugboat captain union uh, decided to sabotage us and prevent us from leaving the port. So they left a fuel barge tied up to the ship and just like, oh, we're not going to move it. You can deal. And that was, that was kind of lame. So we were stuck in port for a couple days. Um, day and a half, I think. We were supposed to sail out in the afternoon and we didn't leave out until later, later on the following day. Um, and, uh, there was a Disney cruise line ship that also got stuck in the same labor conflict. So, um, so they had uh, changed the itinerary and we were basically at sea for most of the time. We didn't, we didn't stop as many places we were, we were supposed to. Um, so we did stop and get off in Juneau. And we went on a cute little um, shore excursion where we got to um, we got to cuddle with baby Alaskan huskies. So they're sled dogs, and we went to their where they summer. They're like their summer camp, as it were, and that was cool. And we got to ride, and they have these. It's summertime so they don't um they don't run them on the snow in the summer because there's not really enough snow around uh so instead they have like these wheeled carts and they use them to train the dogs Ooh, ooh, ooh. okay interesting okay Um, so yeah, that was, uh, that was cute. And they had, they had puppies, little tiny puppies that were like three, four weeks old. And we got to hold them and cuddle with them. They were terrified, shaking and shaky, shaky, shaky. Um, but that was nice. So we, we did that. That was fun. Uh, we rode on the, the wheeled sled <coughs> in the rain. That wasn't uh, as exciting as I was. I don't know. I, um, I didn't imagine it was going to be all that exciting, honestly. But it was, it was okay. It wasn't super great. 
Um, that was the least, to me, that was the least intriguing part of the, of the stop. Um, just getting to hang out with the dogs and pet the puppies. That was, that was what was uh, interesting to me. Uh, and that was cool. Um, and then we didn't stop. There were a couple of spots where we were supposed to stop and did not. Um, or one spot. And then we got off in Ketchikan, which heralds itself the salmon capital of the world. They do a lot of salmon canning there. And um, I am deathly allergic to salmon. So that was... Um, interesting um but we didn't didn't eat there we were supposed to go to see a lumberjack show they have this little it's a touristy thing but it's fun we've done it before and it's kind of uh we'll sit at a little outdoor amphitheater and you watch teams of lumberjacks compete doing lumberjack things like axe throwing and log rolling and um what else do they do uh, uh, two-handed uh, log sign with these gargantuan saws. These gargantuan push-pull saws. Uh, and then they do um, log carving with cha with uh, chainsaws. It's exciting. It's fun. We were looking forward to it. But then, um, then Chihuahua Power G started feeling poorly. And it became clear... That she probably had the COVID. So we didn't want to take risks. We did testing. We knew that she was she was just testing positive, but it was just kind of just barely, like she had small viral load. So we were kind of hoping that was a fluke, but of course it wasn't. I was testing negative. I wasn't I was feeling fine. So we sent her mother to go see the lumberjacks. And then she started feeling poorly and thought she just had a cold. And it was like, ugh. Most people who have COVID these days think they have a cold. That's just the way it goes. And, but I was not able to sort of get it through to her that, no, there's a good chance you don't just have a cold. Um, and she blamed it on the puppies, which I thought was cute. But <clears throat> regardless, um, she we had some. I brought along some COVID tests, and Giselle tested just barely positive. Her mother tested negative, um, and I tested negative, so. We were hoping that it was all just, you know, it was going to be okay. And uh, got to the end of the cruise, or towards the end of the last night, and we realized that there were implications for knowing that she had tested positive. Um, the responsible thing to do was she reported to the ship's medical, even though she was feeling pretty well. I was re reported to the ship's medical team and then talk with them about what the what the uh, sort of protocol would be in terms of um, isolating after the cruise. Uh, we're in Canada. So Canada has pretty serious COVID management um, policies. They're more stringent than they are anywhere else, pretty much, except maybe like China. Um, certainly more stringent than the United States. The United States has backed off, realizing that these policies aren't really helping control the spread of the virus. So they're like, okay, we're... And, and realizing that the lockdowns have been disasters for other reasons. So they're just like, okay, well, we're going to, we're going to do, we're going to take precautions. And, and if you no longer have symptoms, 
regardless of your testing status, um, we're going to recommend a, like a five day isolation and then you can go about your, your business wearing a mask, which there's significant evidence that masks aren't doing a whole lot to help control the spread of the virus either. But it's neither here nor there. So we, we masked up while we were on the ship and we uh, called the medical, the medical team on the ship and they were not, they were not in a rush to deal with us. They did not treat it like it was a, it was a huge thing. So they were like, okay, uh, we'll call you. And then they called us and, um, said, yeah, why don't you, uh, why don't you come on down and <coughs> we'll test you. Um, which they did and she tested positive. They tested me. I tested negative. And so then we had the conversation that we were kind of dreading. Um, Canada's rules about isolation. If you catch COVID on a ship, on a cruise ship and you come back into Vancouver, what we were doing, um, their rule is that you have to isolate for for 10 days and they won't help whatsoever with that isolation and the cruise line um fortunately was willing to help somewhat with it they were willing to help find a hotel room and pay us a, a stipend for that hotel room Probably not as much as the room would have cost. Uh, and the other option was if we have room on the ship, you can just stay on the ship and do another lap of the cruise. Which is what we did. Um, so Chihuahua Power G is still on the cruise ship in Alaska uh, going on the next round of the ship. Um, she's confined to her room. They did not have room to isolate her from me the last night we were on. So I was allowed to stay in the room and they did not prevent me from getting off the ship. They prevented her from getting off the ship because they confiscated her passport. Um, and so I got off the ship and I got into a little spat with the Canadian authorities because... I got selected for a random COVID test once we landed in the plane in Vancouver the night before the cruise, but they didn't, I was, I knew that that was a possibility, but frankly, I expected that they would pull me aside and say, Hey, here, stick this up your nose. That did not happen. They basically then that night sent me an email saying, Oh, you've been randomly selected. Congratulations. You, you randomly won a COVID test. And I can't just do one of the, the COVID tests that I brought with me. It has to be a molecular test, a PCR test with an approved vendor. And of course, all the approved vendors were closed and it was getting on the cruise ship in the morning. So I didn't. So then they're like, oh, and if you don't, then we'll give you a call. It's important you answer the call. And of course, I was on the ship, didn't have cell service. And my Wi-Fi was spotty enough that basically they would call and then um, I wouldn't get, the, the phone wouldn't ring and then it would go straight to voicemail and go to voicemail. And then they didn't even have a human being trying to make the call. It was a freaking robo call. And um, <clears throat> um, and instead of you know announcing what it was detecting the fact that i didn't answer it just launched and saying hey eh, for service in french press one for service in english press two or whatever the voice menu system was and of course by that point that couldn't do anything and i didn't have a number to call back it's really lame and then finally a couple days later uh, it rang and my phone actually rang i actually got the notification that there somebody was trying to call so i picked up and talked to the robocall and it was a very frustrating experience and they were like did you take the test i'm like i don't know you're calling me because you think i didn't so i don't understand why you're asking me that question but 
no, I did not. And they're like, oh, why not? And then they gave me a multiple choice quiz on why I didn't take the test. And none of the answers were appropriate to my situation. And there was no none of the above option. It was really dumb. It was a badly designed system. And it was not not friendly or graceful or... Um, it was just, it was frankly kind of um, insulting and um, badly designed. So, so I, I finished up that call. I'm like, okay, well, you're required to take it as soon as you can. I'm like, okay, good. So catch me if you can. Um, they had multiple opportunities, me getting off the ship, me going through customs into Canada, and me checking in on my flight, and they didn't stop me in any one of them, so I got out of the country and flew back home to L.A. And I'm now, at some point, expecting them to call and say, oh, we can find you up to $4,000. Now, it's Canadian dollars, which, even in Canadian dollars, is still a fair chunk of money. Because um, the, can the Canadian dollar is not particularly, particularly strong right now. So, um... So I don't know. Um, so I was planning on giving, seeing if I could find a number to call for the Canadian Health Ministry and explain my situation and say, look, I didn't have it when I was on board. I had a test from the cruise line. Um, I had to take a test. I had to take a proctored test before getting on the airplane to fly, to get on the ship. So I know I didn't have it. And the testing is not, the testing they want to do is, is like tracing testing. Um, not even like to determine did I have it uh, before I, I got on, uh, before I arrived or when I got it right when I arrived. It's, I think they're trying to determine how prevalent it was people who got off the airplane and maybe tested positive after getting off the airplane, but they wanted people to do it within 24 hours of being there, which is dumb. Because if you caught it on the plane, you probably wouldn't test positive right away. It would take a few days. <sighs> anyway. So, I did not get apprehended by the Canadians. And I got out of the country and I went back home to rescue all the animals from our pet sitter and who stayed around until I got home. Um, but I took advantage of a thing that the cruise line has. It's self-assisted um, disembarkation, they called it. Normally what you do is you give them your bags, you put them out the night before, and if you need toiletries or medication or a change of clothes, you sort of hang on to that, unpack it, and sort of put it in another bag that you keep with you. And then you put your bags out on outside your door the night before you get off the ship. And then they give you a number and then you wait for them to call your number. And then you get off the ship and your number's called. And then you go and there's a baggage claim area um, in the cruise terminal where you pick up your bags. And I think it's just to avoid having 3,000 people with bags all clogging the elevators at the same time, trying to get off the ship and just creating a mess. Um, so instead, they have this, for people who don't want to participate in that process, they have this self-assisted self disembarkation where you don't give them your bags and you go to a public space on the ship and wait for an announcement at like 7.30 a.m. so you're the first people off. And they figure most people aren't going to do that. So, great. Um, so that's what I did. I kept my bags in the room. And then I got up really early. And they uh, they announced, okay, those of you doing this, the, the self-assist disembarkation, um, please head to the, the gangway on deck five or whatever. <laughs> And I did that. There was no line. There were like three people ahead of me. And I just, I got off the ship, walked up to the zero line uh, Canadian 
Border Protection Customs agent. There were three of them working, anticipating a crush of 3,000 people. So there was no line waiting in customs. And so then I just uh, sailed through. They were a little confused because I had put Chihuahua Power G on the customs declaration form that I filled out a couple days before. Explained they were that I was traveling alone, that she would be staying on the ship. They seemed very confused at first, and then they then it clicked. It's like, oh, yeah, she has the COVID. So, um, so they let me go. He said, Thank you very much. I wasn't bringing, I wasn't trying to bring pot or um, lots of money out of the country with me and they just took my word for it and and that was that so it was uh let me go i walked out there were there were a bunch of taxis waiting for people for this crush of three thousand people to get off the ship got in one i said take me to the airport and the only real line i waited in was the u.s customs line at the vancouver airport instead of making us wait till we got to lax they did it right in Vancouver. So I waited about 40 minutes in that line and then got to my gate and got through security, which was pretty light, especially considering how messy the TSA tries to make it in LA and Los Angeles <coughs> National Airport. And... Um, so I got to my gate like four hours early. So I found a found a power outlet, plugged in my laptop, started watching YouTube videos, and waited. Got on my plane, flew home, got off the plane, and we had parked the car at, in the long-term parking at LAX. It was a little expensive, but we did it because... Um, we wanted to have the car waiting for us when we got there and we didn't have to want have to worry about like Uber or whatever. And went and got the car. Fortunately, I had thought to get, it was a Chihuahua Power G's car that we took. Uh, fortunately, I had thought to get the car keys from her because I didn't have my copy of her car keys. Got in the car, drove home. And I was feeling fine and then... Um, last night, that was, that was Sunday, and then last night, Monday, yesterday afternoon, I started feeling a little bit poorly. Um, throat started feeling a little scratchy. I'm like, oh no. And I had been testing, and even after I got home and was testing negative. But, it caught up with me. Um, I had COVID just about three months ago in uh, late May, early June. Following the Magic Live convention, somebody um, brought back COVID from Magic Live to the Magic Castle where I caught it. And uh, I was kind of riding off the assumption that I wouldn't catch it because I had it and had that natural immunity. It was about three months. Uh, but I know I knew people were getting reinfected. Oh, look, there's more slimes down there. Um, people were getting reinfected. And so I knew it was a possibility. And they weren't, they didn't have a room to isolate Chihuahua Power G and, um, after she was diagnosed. So they let us stay in the room together. Under normal policy, that would mean, that would have meant I would have had to stay and isolate after the cruise as well. But since I tested negative, they're like, no, you can go. And so I, I'm going to spend the entire week pretty much 24-7 with her, largely in confined spaces. So um, I think my, my immune system did a good job of sort of putting up a fight, um, but finally got a little, oh, hello. Yeah, see, he spawned up on one of those and jumped down and decided to run in my face. But it's just a little too much for him. 
So now he's smaller and easier to kill. And with the looting sword, a couple large slimes get you like a stack of slime balls. So being a farm kind of makes a ton of sense. But look, slime powder. So anyway, uh, so yeah, last night my throat started getting scratchy and I started feeling feeling like I had a cold. And I was like, okay, I bet I know what this is. Um, tested yesterday afternoon, tested negative. Um, this earlier today, this morning, or this early afternoon, I tested and tested positive. So I have COVID. Um, again, I put up a fight. Um, but it was just spending way too much time in confined space with two people with COVID. So it just eventually just overtook me. So, um... Last night, I scratchy throat and cough. This morning, my throat still feels like itchy, but it doesn't feel as bad, and my cough isn't as bad. So I think I'm doing better, and the previous infection probably is helping with that. And I kind of expect that this will go for a few days, and I'll be done with it. Um, ooh. Um, at least I'm hoping so. Got things planned. I'm scheduled my calendar, and that's partly why I was so adamant I needed to come home. But obviously, I'm gonna have to reschedule stuff, cancel on things, um, which is unfortunate. But I mean, the whole goal of being responsible and staying behind, having Power Power G stay behind. So we knew she was sick, and we. It's like her father is like 90 years old and puts him in the very highest risk category for COVID. So the goal was don't give him COVID. And and that, I can hear somebody else up here. Oh, he's a little baby. Um, and that if somebody else on the got on the plane knowing they had COVID and found its way to her dad and he got sick and, you know, worst case, God forbid, died, um, that would just be like, we'd be furious at that. So we didn't want to be responsible for doing that to someone else. This is a disease at this point that affects most people, young people and healthy people, very little. Um, People with underlying conditions are definitely at a higher risk, um, especially people who are sick, have some sort of chronic illness, uh, diabetes, or severely overweight. Um, they're at a much higher risk of getting seriously ill and uh, or dying. And old people are particularly at risk. So in LA County, they, they, they every day break down the death uh, stats or most days they, they break down the death stats and by age group and they report on how many people had underlying conditions and the majority and it's always at least like 60 percent and sometimes it's as high as 80 or 90 percent of the the cases of the that result in death or the deaths are people who are 80 and over. And so, and people who are 80 and over make up less than 2%. It's something like 1.8% of the US population. So by far, it's a disproportionate representation amongst 80, you know, octogenarians and higher. And so we were, um, Um, our, our goal was to make sure that her father did not catch the COVID because that would be the worst thing. He, you know, he's in reasonably good shape, but he's old. And I know that Trial Power G, if he got sick, seriously sick, and, and especially if he died, 
it would be she wouldn't she wouldn't forgive herself for it so that was that was the, the plan and thought I escaped um, her mom with her cold got home and she had tested negative but she got home and tested and it turned out positive so she has she has COVID not surprising given how much time she spent with us throughout the week um, and so we got her dad into a hotel room so we're kind of going through um, some hassle with that because stupid baseball the Dodgers are in town so all the hotels are full it's very annoying but um, so that that's where I am right now <laughs> so I'm I'm feeling feeling better than I was last night I was feeling a little sicky and this morning I feel like I'm I'm recovering from feeling sicky um, so hopefully that's the case and that um, last time when I had it you know I'm saying three months ago but it was like more like three and a half months um, um, I had one bad night where I had fever and chills and was uh, just felt like the worst flu I've ever had and then then it all subsided <clears throat> and then I just felt like I had a mild cold for a few days so hopefully I'm just I hopefully I skipped the uh, the flu like portion of it and I'm just on the mild cold and I have to put up with this for another couple days and then I'll be feeling fine um, so yeah anyway that's the update that's where I've been um, so I decided to hop on do a little streaming here and I was had decided to build start working on a villager trading hall over at the mushroom island so I haven't entirely decided where I'm gonna put it but I was gonna start just putting it just on the surface um, don't bother building underground for it. Don't build any kind of a underground structure. Um, and then if I decide to move them into an underground structure, I could do that at a later time. Uh, just There are a few books that would be very handy for me to be able to get, and they are not available at any of the other villagers uh, on the server at the moment. So that is that was kind of my plan for... My uh, my time off. Hello. Where did you come from? Oh, I've got some caves over here. I haven't lit up properly. Let's see if I can get lost. There's another one up there. Oh, I bet there's a spawner up there. Come on. I think I saw the glow of somebody else, too. Oh, yeah, I haven't been over here at all. That's crazy because I've been working right next to it. So oh, I see somebody. <coughs> Oops. Okay. So let's see if there's another spawner up here because that wouldn't surprise me at all. Could have just a pack spawn of skeletons too, but I got plenty of torches. Ah, no, just a little dark corner. Just a pack spawn of skeletons. Okay, there's more down over here. Look, gold. Oh, 
Oh, hey, look at this. Yep, yeah, there's a skeleton spawner. Goodness gra- Oh, this is a weird arrangement of chests. Oh, and I was just over here, and I just didn't go quite far enough. Goodness gracious, Theron. Let's see what we got in these chests. Name tag. Always take a name tag. I don't need the bones. Really, I don't need the bones. Ooh, diamond horse armor. Projectile protection for book. That's not bad. Uh, diamond horse armor. <gasps> oh my gosh. Oh, that's awesome. I'm going to take the diamond horse armor. Not that I have that many horses. Oh my gosh. Um, let's make sure I don't get lost in here. Oh, take a screenshot of the coordinates. This might be a useful thing to sort of develop into a uh, small passive XP farm. To repair tools and stuff. Because I've been going back to my... It was over here, right? I've been going back to my base... And sure that's lit up sufficiently. And then going through the nether and going to the skeleton XP farm. This is how it came up, right? No, uh, maybe not. I don't remember there being lava. There's lava here. Okay. Okay, I remember seeing over here that there was another exit down into the cavern, so I could at least jump down there since I have my elytra. Oh, it's so difficult navigating these noodle caves. Wait. Am I lost? I might be. This is unexplored. I haven't been up here. I haven't lit anything here. Not dead end. Okay. That's lava. Oh, that that's where I came from. Yes. Okay. Wait. What is this? Yeah, this is just blocks I haven't cleared out yet. So. I'm going to take out this giant slime. And his little baby cousin over there. Come here, buddy. Don't despawn on me. Slime balls. Okay, that is a record disc I have not seen yet. It's one of the new ones in Minecraft, and I have never come across it. So that's super exciting. Um, it's not the pig step one, which would be even more exciting, but that's okay. Let's put this couple of. Deep slate, this other stuff can come back with me. Smelch that down, add that to my list of books. I don't really need these arrows. I have too many arrows as it is. Put the slime balls away. And then let's go um let's go upstairs and play this disc. That'll be a good way to end the stream. And yammering at you long enough. Oops, let's grab this, this iron. Not that I need. And they need more smelted iron. Um, oh, I can turn those raw iron blocks into iron blocks, right? I think so. Raw iron blocks. So let's do that.
Ah, oh, so needless to say, it was very strange leaving my wife in another country where she was effectively being held hostage um, by the cruise line and the Canadian government and coming home. It was just, it was weird and I felt kind of guilty about it and, hey buddy, come here, let's go to bed, it's bedtime. And yeah, come on, oh, that's weird, you're levitating above me. Did you give me a, oh look, he gave me a rabbit's foot. Thank you, thank you. That was nice. I didn't realize that's how that mechanic worked. I knew that the cats could give you presents, but I didn't realize that it was you had to sleep to do it. So that rabbits was good. I can bring that over to the uh, my potion smelting house and put it in there so I make potions of leaping. Okay. Ready? Um, I have... Two thirteens and two, two cats are by far the most common ones. I do like this music this Come here, kitties. Right, well, we'll leave it there. Thank you for watching.